transmission is a method that has been long used in IR spectroscopy. It's very simple and quite frequently is the most cost effective of the methods that are used in transmission. And basically this is how it works. In a transmission experiment, you have a source, some sort, and I'm gonna represent that as a little sun here. Uh, that would be our interferometer in the infrared, and that's putting out light. That light goes into the sample, which I'll represent here as a cuvette containing a nice little liquid. And then that liquid in that cuvette absorbs some of the light, so what comes out the other side is lower in intensity. And then we pick that up on a detector, which I represent here as the eye. And that's all there really is to it. You have a sample in the beam between the source and the detector. The sample absorbs that light. We see that change. We take a spectrum without the sample present to give us a background. We put the sample in. We look at the difference. That tells us how much of the light is absorbed. And then the critical relationship for this is something called the Beer law, Beer's Law or Beer-Lambert Law which can be simply stated as the absorption or the total absorption of the sample is proportional to three things. Epsilon, and this is called the absorptivity, and that absorptivity represents the amount of light absorbed at a particular wavelength or frequency or wave number by a particular molecule. So this is unique to each molecule and unique to each frequency. This is where the spectrum comes from because this is defining the spectrum, the absorption as you go across. The second parameter is L, the path length, which is the length through which the beam passes containing the sample. And then finally, the third parameter is C, the concentration of the material that's in there. So when you look at LC, this is telling you how many molecules are in the infrared beam. The total number, total concentration, and the total length. That's telling me something about the number of molecules. And then epsilon gives me the, abs the absorption of those molecules. And when I look at this, I get the overall A or absorption spectrum of that uh, sample. When you consider this, why would you do transmission? One of the best reasons is that this is probably the most cost effective or least expensive of the methods, depending upon how many samples you do and how you run them, it can be very low cost. It does require sample prep. This is one of the pieces that we'll discuss in the next video about this, next series of videos, is about how you prepare samples when you're doing transmission, when you're doing powders, when you're doing liquids, when you're doing other kinds of solids. So that's the complexity of it, is how you prepare your samples. So most of the libraries that you will use, most of the libraries that are commercially available, or many of them at least, were prepared using transmission. And many SOPs, the standard operating procedures, such as the study of asbestos in the ceiling tiles, which is done in Europe, requires you to do it by transmission. It requires you to make samples that do it by transmission. So that's a brief overview of transmission. Now let's go in the lab and see how we actually do this.